Hi, hello lads. Um, so today we're just going to have a look at some different um, features of um, how to interact with exponential functions. So um, I'm going to give you an exponential function, a very simple one. Okay, so let's say y is equal to 0 0.6 to, to the power of x. Okay, and usually uh, the first question that's usually asked in this would be something like, um, what is the y-intercept? What is the y inter C E P T? In other words, where does this function cross the y axis? And a kind of where this will usually arrive in an actual exam question will be usually the y intercept point is the point at which the, the, the function starts to work. You know, it's usually at t equals zero if we're talking about time. It's usually usually at um n and equals zero for you know um how many are you know how many sweets are in the box before you start eating them um it's usually um you know k is equal to zero you know how many kilograms of milk have you in the pot before you, it starts turning into cheese so that when you're trying to find that initial state that initial amount whether it's zero or whether it's just a seed amount in a, in a growth formula it's usually where it cuts the y-axis, in other words, what's the y-intercept, okay? And to find the y-intercept, it's very simple. We're going to let x equal 0 and solve for y. So in this case, we have a function y equal to 0 0.6, and I'm going to let x equal to 0, so that's 2 to the power of 0, okay? So you can use your calculator, or you can just use your rule that any indice that is 0 means that the base number will become 1. So that's really y is equal to 0 0.6 times 1, which is 0 0.6. So that cuts the y-axis at 0 and 0 0.6. So 0 on the x-axis and 0 0.6 on the y-axis. Okay, so that's your simple kind of um, way of figuring out an intercept. Okay, and obviously it follows on from that then that you can actually, you know, you can graph these. Okay, so... Use a very simple one, I suppose. Um, let's say you have y equal 3, 2 to the x. And we have another function. Let's say we have y equal to 2, 3 to the minus x. And I want to graph both these functions. Well, you can use your calculator, but I, I, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do a very simple one. Okay, so we'll do two columns, x and y. Again, you, you can use a calculator to do this a lot quicker than this. Okay, so we're going to start at x equals 0, and then do x equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we'll see what y's we generate. Okay, when x is 0, y is 3. When x is 1, y is 6. When x is 2, that's 2 squared is 4, y is 12. When x is 3, that's 24. When x is 4, okay, so that's 16, that's 48. Okay, 3, 6, 12. It's doubling up each time. You can see that. But your initial state was 3. Now let's have a look at this one. We'll do the same thing here. We'll do our y and do our x. We'll do 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so when x is 0, y is 2. Oh, pencil's going there. When x is 1, so that's really going to be 2 times 3 to the power of minus 1. That's 2 thirds. When x is 2, that's going to be 2 ninths. When x is 3, uh, that's going to be 2 over 27. When x is 4, that's going to be 3 3 is 9. 3 9 is 27. 3 27 is 81. That's going to be 2 over 81. Okay? So... You can see this one is an increasing function and this one is a decreasing function. So how would I actually represent both of these? Well, listen, you'll have graph paper. I don't have graph paper here at the moment, but let's just give this our best shot. Okay. We graph this one because it's an easier one to graph. So we'll just go, there's one, two, three, four, Okay, and we're going to go up. Let's go up in oh, tens, I suppose. Okay. 
50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. So we're starting at zero on the X and three on the Y. So if this is 10, it's about there, third of the way up the first interval, okay? When it's one, it's six. So it's about two thirds up. When it's two, it's 12. It's about there. Again, you need graph paper to do this properly. When it's three, it's 24. There's 10, 24-ish. And when it's four, it's 48. So you're talking somewhere up there. So you can see your little points there. And there's your points done. Okay, apologies for that. Now, let's do this one. Same scale, zero to four. Okay, our first one is two. Okay. So again, two would be just about there. Okay. And then our next point is two thirds. So one and two thirds. So you can see what's happening is this one's going to go kind of like that very hard to draw but that's the way it's going to go um god it's very hard i need a giant scale to draw this but basically it's going to go that way it'll never touch the x-axis but it's going to down that way okay so <clears throat> that's a harder one to draw okay and then you'll get the traditional questions like, you know, where is one function greater than or eight or, but that's how I would draw them. I wouldn't sketch them. Use your graph paper to do it properly. Use big scales. Look at your Y values. You know, if the scales are completely in opposite directions, obviously you're going to need to stretch this out. If they're both going in the same direction, you can always make them smaller if you can want to fit more on. All right. So let's have a look at another type of question. Right, so here's an example of a nice little question, okay? The number of days the yogurt stays fresh um, if stored at a temperature T is D is equal to number of days, 18 times 0 0.72 to the power of T, where T is the temperature, okay? Is this example of growth or decay? All I have to do is to test this for the first part. If I want to test whether it's growth or decay, all I have to do is put in values for T. I'll start with t is equal to zero, then t is equal to one, then t is equal to two, until I see whether I get an increase in or a decrease in function, okay? So, obviously, if I put in zero, I'm gonna get roughly nine, 10, maybe 11 days, okay? As I keep increasing the temperature, okay? If I put in 10, if I put in 20, Okay, as I increase the temperature, the number of days is going to get smaller because I'm going to be consider I'm always going to be multiplying a whole number by a smaller fraction because this value, as this number gets bigger, makes this number smaller. And as this number gets so I'll show you this with a little example. What's the easiest way to show you that? Right, so if I put in 18 bracket 0.72 close bracket to the power of 1, I get 12.96. So when t is equal to 1, I get d is equal to 12.96. Now, let's put in t equals 2. So all I have to do is go back in here, change that to 2. Make it a three, just to prove the point. So it's a decrease in function. As I increase the X value, in other words, I increase the T, the D, the Y value gets smaller. So it's going that way, from a high number at the start to a lower number, okay? So how many days would it be at five? So at five, as 18 times 0 0.72 to the 
power of 5. At 2, we already know what that is, 9.33. And at 0, well, let's work that one out. So let's work out the 5 one first, 18, bracket, right? 3.48 days. And we get 0. 18 days. So, obviously the lower the temperature, the longer it lasts. Okay? So, if I want to keep it for 5 days, right, let's think about it for ourselves. If we want to keep it for 5 days, 3 days, let's try 2 days. Or sorry, two temperatures and temperature of two. Let's see, what do we get? Does it come close to five? Okay, two comes out as 9.33. So let's do it four. Yeah, so it's roughly four days. So. At least five days. Eh. You're talking maybe a temperature of six least five days yeah, somewhere between a temperature of four or temperature equal five so if I did four and a half I get 4.10 if I do temperature of five get 3.8 uh, temperature of 3.5 so yeah, between 4 and 3.5. Somewhere between 4 and 3.5 is where you're going to find the five-day window. Okay, so there's some examples of exponential functions.